Oh, hello everyone. I, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and I've just returned from an epic journey. One with twists and turns. Hanzos. And Genji names. I almost didn't make out alive, but... Here I am. Uh, back from the strange land of esports, and, uh, I'm in one piece. And, oh man, I should have never left. Let me tell you, it's... Should have stayed here with you guys, but that's a story for another time. For another day. Because, uh, you know, here I am, checking out, seeing what's going on with the good old Overwatch community. Right now, I'm, I'm around, right? We're on Reddit and stuff. Mercy, uh, pretty good, I've heard. You know, just... Little, little good? Okay? Little? I don't know. Uh, but, that is all aside, because apparently, we're on full red alert. Everything has fallen down the chute since, since I've been away. I don't know, I, I, I left YouTube, I mean, I didn't really leave YouTube, right? I just, you know, the last YouTube video I made, things were looking up. The community was okay, people were being positive, people were being cool. But now I come back and it's like, oh, we're gonna get to the bottom. We're, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. Poor teamwork is not playing a hero that is not considered optimal by the community or staying silent in team voice chat. So, what exactly does poor teamwork mean then? No one else in this game, on this specific team, is enjoying the game, is enjoying playing the game at all because of this one person. There isn't an easy solution to this. Yeah, there is. Punishing one tricking, punishing refusing to work the team, and punishing not doing your best and like helping everyone to win. Ball. They're just so bad. They're just insane bad at this game. They should not be anywhere near my skill level. They should never, ever, I should never see these people. They should never, ever, ever come close to my games. They should just stay in their elo and get the f out of my games. Oh. Oh. Okay. I see what's going on. Yeah, so we're just gonna use this video to set a few things straight. Straight. That that means straight. It's not gonna be a very fun video. We're gonna have a fun video coming up, but this video is just going to be, you know, I don't want competitive Overwatch to just die from toxicity. Uh, I've seen it before in other games, but mostly, specifically, when the community turns on each other instead of focusing on the game, the game, that's when things get really messed up. So let's talk a little bit about that. So what I mean by that is when players shift their focus away from the game and towards each other, like for example the one trick witch hunts that have been going on, it's a mentality that is the scrub mentality. Now sure, some of these players are high ranked and are good at winning games and they even might be professionally good at winning games in certain environments, but that doesn't mean they aren't a scrub in certain contexts, right? I'm using the term scrub from David Serlin's relatively well-known classic article, Playing to Win. Now that guy can sometimes go off the deep end, so fair warning there, but this particular piece of his is well-known for a reason. In it, he basically explains what it means to play a game competitively. He gives a few examples which basically conclude that a competitive player should do whatever it takes to win, whether that's throwing your opponent five times in a row in a fighting game, or cannon rushing in StarCraft, no matter how che cheesy, how vilely regarded by the community, or how unfun that thing is. There's a reason why not just any game can be an eSport. There's a reason why uh, the practice of making every game an eSport is kind of, um, I guess, naive, right? It's extremely rare to have a good game, right? A competitive game needs to hold up to the most brutal cheese and the most underhanded tactics players can possibly come up with to get any sort of edge and still be fun and enjoyable to play and then not even getting into the fun and enjoyable to watch part. So those games I said above were 1v1 games, StarCraft, Street Fighter, but Overwatch is the same. Now Overwatch does have 12 people in a game session, 12 players, 6 on each team, but what if I told you that Overwatch was not a team game? The competitive game mode, I mean, not, not not a tournament, right? The competitive game mode is not a team game. It is a solo game. I'm looking at the leaderboards right here. Let me just bring it up. I'm looking at the leaderboards right now, and I don't see any teams here. There's only one player in the number one spot, one player in the number two spot, and so on. When you play ranked, 
you're actually playing against all 11 players in each of your games. Now, the way the game is designed, because some smart, good developers, designers designed it, makes it so that six of those players just happen to want to work together in some way for mutual benefit. But at the end of the day, when you look at your stats page at the end of the season, there's only one name, and it's your name. And there's only one number, and it's your skill rating number. Why does this matter? Basically, nobody has any commitment to anyone else. That's very important. I try to tell people that when they explain, you know, like, oh, I don't want to play ranked because what if I let my team down? Nobody has a commitment to anyone else. You don't owe your teammates anything. The system should naturally make everything work properly. We have griefers and hackers and throwers, sure, but all of those fall outside the system. They're not participating properly in the system, which is why we ban them. Hackers are the most obvious because they're literally running a different game, different code than other people, where they have an overlay on top of the game. Griefers and throwers are not participating. They're not actually trying to win the game. But I'm talking about players who do participate in the game as we know it. The idea is that by winning, you win for yourself and coincidentally for all the other players on your team. You're rewarded with a higher rank and the ability to play with other highly ranked players. I railed a couple people already earlier in the video, so let me balance that out real quick by giving a shout out to my boy, I don't, I've never actually talked to him, but Emong, he's really he's a really cool guy. If you wanna watch a, uh, a genuine, very positive, great streamer, I recommend him. Benefit the tour more and more and more and they, they go up there and climb. Now, listen, this Torb one tricking obviously isn't the best thing, right? But the system's the system's like promoting it, right? So it's like nothing you can do about that. Like you have a system in front of you, you just gotta deal with it and just do your best, All right? His stream is in the description, by the way. Uh, pretty positive guy from what I've seen. I just wanted to balance that out, right? I don't want to tear people down and not build someone else up. But anyway, if you do things in the game that make you lose, the punishment is that you lose rating so that you play with lower rated players so you throw 12 individual players into a game all with their own ideas as to how to make themselves win remember it's just about you and you wind up with an outcome and the out and you know it works if you look at league of legends or dota it's like this cool little ecosystem and the game developers have made it so it works right and overwatch is pretty similar so how are overwatch players really screwing this up there has been a growing sentiment rapidly growing sentiment it's always been there but it's really gone off the rails lately the past two months that there is an ethical way to play overwatch in the biggest juiciest plumpest quotation marks i can possibly put on there ethical uh, now this has always been around it's just really exploded this past month i mean people are really hating on players who play differently to the point where now it is a strictly better strategy and I mean, you can ask a lot of matchmaking coaches, some of the most famous ones that, that really have good results in getting people higher ranks. They will say, yeah, just mute voice chat. Just don't. If you if you play any way that is not 100% ethical, according to the community, just mute voice chat. You'll probably have a better win percentage because it's just distracting. Look, if you don't like playing the game for whatever reason, that's fine. Feel free to complain all day about how you don't like the game. Constructively, of course, we're a positive channel here. But once you start hating on the players who are just using the system the way it's built, that is where you go from being constructive to being a scrub. I don't care if you're a two-time back-to-back top 500 blockbuster Overwatch tournament winner, you are a scrub. Right, now, uh, the 14th highest rated player on the ladder, or actually, no, he's probably not the 14th rated right now, but is Nut, who only plays Symmetra. That's, just, that's the strategy he's using in. Heck, it seems to be working. There are others uh, who are probably a little bit more outdated. I don't know who like the the ones for this season are, but uh, Stevo is a really a really famous one who plays Symmetra. You have EVA on Mercy and plenty of others uh, who are very highly rated on other heroes as well. Now, one of the biggest problems with Symmetra that frustrates players, Symmetra main specifically, is that when she's good on certain maps, she is really good. Like she wins every time. But when she's bad, she's really bad. Like, she loses every time. So sometimes if you get a player like Nut on your team, who's a god tier Symmetra, you're putting yourself at a significant disadvantage depending on the map. 
An example we have here is Jake. He's the captain of the USA World Cup team for Overwatch. He's also an okay-sized streamer. And he wrote this article talking about one tricks. And overall, actually, to be fair, if you really dig into what he's talking about, it's a pretty it's pretty fair. The low-level points. But the way he words it is the exact way that I'm talking about, right? He says, one-tricking is the, like, the, the one-tricks are bad. The people are bad. He's not saying that the system is bad. He's not saying that something needs to be changed or giving any advice in that direction. He's just talking about how bad one tricks are. And to give you an idea of the type of people we're talking about here who use this sort of argument, well. At least, hey, you know what? At least we can get Nut out of the top 10. So we can call this a W either way. Hey guys, I'm almost there. I'm, I'm making it. Kappa. We can't, we literally can't lose this game, guys. Either Nut loses or we win. Jake, define to me what feeding is like. We keep saying, like, I don't do this ever. We don't just like violence on throwing games with. Yeah, and that's not, that's one example, but generally, almost always, people with this mentality, it's a mentality. Like I said, it's pervasive. Everything they do will have the same mentality applied to it, and this is the result. And it's becoming very big in the community right now. And, uh, yeah, you can see how it's uh, sort of its end conclusion if you bring this logic all the way through. But remember, this is an MMR system. This is a ladder where you're trying to get as high as possible. So, as long as there are more advantageous situations than disadvantageous, Nut will have a greater than 50% win rate, and he'll continue to climb. See how that works? Like, if 40% if of the time you auto-lose, and 40% of the time you auto win with Symmetra and then the other 20% of the time you just win usually, then you'll still climb. This isn't his problem. This is not his problem. He's not a bad person. That's the game's problem. Do you know why Mercy was changed? It's because while people did hate on Mercy mains, they hated more so on the hero and how easy it was. They gave Blizzard a specific complaint about the game, and they hit it hard on the forums, on Reddit, everywhere. Mercy is too easy, and it feels unfair that a lower-skilled player can play up in GM with Mercy when they couldn't possibly do that with other heroes. That was the complaint, and magically, it was changed. Now, it, it was changed, okay? I'm, I'm not saying it's good now, but it was changed. That's the point. <laughs> they tried. And you can see that Mercy is continuing to be changed, right? Symmetra, though? Torbjorn, though? Bastion? I mean, kind of? It's all directed toward the players. The players. You'll get harassed for playing Symmetra because you're playing Symmetra. No real reason. People don't actually voice a reason why Symmetra is bad. So when Jeff comes into the Blizzard forum, he has so many, he like literally reads that every day, by the way. When Jeff comes into the Blizzard forum and he takes a look at the problem, he pulls up the stats, he sees, hey, Symmetra is actually pretty good, and he just writes it off on whining. He's just like, you guys are dumb, what are you doing? The only way this game will move forward in a competitive sense is if we all encourage a competitive mentality and defend those who are victims of the rampant scrubbery going on. Only as one uni united body of players can we give Blizzard the proper and directed feedback they need to bring this game to the next level. I'm sure, I am 100% guarantee you, man, 100%. If they were to stop being attacked 24-7, those dirty one tricks, right? The Symmetras, the Torbs, the Bastion one tricks, the I don't know, uh, all, all the various ones. They would actually be with the community on a lot of things. You know, if we sat down and said, oh, well, the problem with Symmetra is that she's too polarizing. She's either way too OP in matchmaking or she's way too useless. It's not very fun to have having Symmetra in the game ever like it's never fun because either she's she's always a ridiculously overbearing presence either positively or negatively um and i'm sure that symmetra players feel kind of similarly too you know i i used to play symmetra quite a bit i i i was quite good at her and i i felt those problems so we could and mercy mains when mercy mains were not being attacked they were kind of sympathizing with some of the things that people were talking about so remember we're all in this together, and as Jeff said in that kind of weird update video that he put out a little while ago, the community has great power to push the development of the game forward, or seize it to a grinding halt. It's on us. Oh, and as one last little aside, stop getting on players who don't belong in a certain elo. The skill-based point system, 
though I do agree should be purely on whims, is not as crazy as everyone is pegging it to be. That's not an excuse uh, to say, oh, well, you know, you wouldn't be up here if it wasn't for Blizzard Mac. Just, sure, you can cherry pick your examples, but if you look at win percentages, and I mean, I literally have pulled hundreds of people's profiles here. Uh, most players, a vast majority of players, belong at whatever rank they they belong at they are at you know once again the system is what the system is you can give constructive criticism to try to help out but just remember to not be a scrub if you complain to blizzard about things that are not real they're going to just consider you a scrub basically and not take your advice so only give real competitive feedback Anyway, guys, all right, I'll keep you updated on Twitter and Discord. I'll probably start streaming again because why not? I've been missing it a whole lot. The links are down below. Check them out. Great to be back, but sometimes positivity means laying down fair criticism when it will help. All right, we'll have a fun video next time, guys. Never forget to stay positive and have a great day. I'll see you soon.